let's build a REST API, or rather REST-like API, that is connected with a database. We will be using a traditional database, and by traditional I mean relational database. This will be PostgreSQL, one of the most popular, one of the most advanced, and one of the most awesome relational database management systems. This video will probably have more than one part. So in this first video, I will go over setup, and then in the next ones, we will explore different scenarios, how to build an application which follows the RESTful architecture more to the latter. As always, we will start with something simple, and then we will explore it further. At some point, I hope we will be close to the ideal RESTful or REST architecture, or maybe not. So the first thing you need is to install PostgreSQL. It's uh, different for different operating systems. So you should just check depending on your system how to install it. So in my case, I'm using a Mac OS. So I have uh, several possibilities even for Mac OS. If you don't want to work with the command line, you can install this Postgres app application. Um, but I like using Homebrew. So with Homebrew, you can just do brew install PostgreSQL. So in my case, it's already installed. And once it's installed, it will tell you how to start the PostgreSQL server. So you can use the, the services uh, tool that comes from Brew. It will add it to the launch D daemon. So it means that after you log in and log out, it will, the Postgres will be still running. So I don't like this approach. So I just prefer to run it from the command line directly. So I will use Postgres and then I have to specify the location of my databases. So if you are on the Mac OS, that's the location. On other systems, you have to check the documentation. And once you start it, the server is running. And then in another window, we can test. So by default, the server starts, the PostgreSQL server starts on the port 5432. And then you can just use the command line tool, PSQL, that comes with Postgres. And you can see if you can access the server. If you run it, you are now connected. In the case the server is not running, it will tell you that there is no server to which it can connect. Okay, so once we have it, we can now create a database. And there are few ways of doing that. The one I will be using here is by the command line tool called createDB, which also comes from Postgres. And you can just say create DB and then specify the name of your database. So let's call it tech events. And now we can connect to this by specifying it as a parameter to PSQL. So now once we have this database, we can now start using it by creating tables and, and adding data. When we build an application, there are many approaches how we want to how we want to start. So you can start from the database point of view, you can start from the code. So it's like a data first, code first approach. They are other approaches in the middle. Each approach has its own merits, and it's not like one approach is better than the other. It depends what you are doing. In this video, we will be doing it through database. So we will start with the database, with the database schema, and based on that, we will build our application. But you have to remember that that's just one way of doing that. I also recommend uh, checking this article by Craig Kerstein, SQL, one of the most valuable skills. Nowadays, the knowledge of SQL is somehow forgotten. SQL is this lingua franca or this general language that you can use anywhere. I encourage you to read that and also to learn SQL because that's the base, that's the good base to, to have. Another approach, which is more popular nowadays, is to just use an ORM, which is object relation mapping. So we will also explore that, but it's good to know, it's good to have the base, the fundamentals, and then uh, reach for those more, more abstract, I wouldn't say more advanced, but more abstract things. So you know how to use them efficiently. And also you know the, the trade-offs, like plain SQL versus a more abstract way of dealing with data. So as always, let's start our application. So we'll be using again Hunsfeld. Uh, let's call the application Tech Events. Okay, it's done. Let's open our repository and let's start the server 
just to see if it uh, works. So again, I will be using my Control T shortcut, which stands for Ran Task. As you know, Hunsud comes already built in with those uh, tasks. So the task is running. And now if I open another window here, and if I send a request to the port 5544, the port on which Hunsud is listening, I should get the message back. And all that is configured here in the routes. So the hello routes returns hello Hunsfold. As we did before in the previous videos, if you haven't seen them, please check them out. Let's create our resource. So in this case, I'm creating event and I will be using controller. And inside, I'm only interested about browsing all events. So just getting all events in the command line. So I will just copy this this code from the base controller because we will be doing something similar. Now we need to connect to our database. In order to do that, we need to configure the access. So in config default, we have the database configuration and we need to specify our name of the database, which is the name of our application. So we just created that just before and the username. So in PostgreSQL by default, the username is the same as the one on the, the operating system. Once you can connect with the PSQL to your database, it means that everything is okay and the user is here. So once you have that, we can now uh, see if we can connect to the database. Right now, our database is empty. So first we need to fill it in. For that, I will uh, create a directory DB and inside this directory, I will um, create a file called setup SQL. And here we will design our schema, so the shape of our data. And for now, we are only interested in events. So I will only create one table. And as we go, we will add more and we will connect those tables and we will see how we can do that. Let's just go ahead and create the event table. And here we need the ID, which in Postgres is serial primary, primary key. And we need a name which is text. And we will also add an automatic column so that each time someone adds something to this table, the created at will be automatically uh, added as well. So this will be timestamp TZ, which stands for timestamp with time zone. This will be always not null. And by default, this will be the result of invoking the now function. So each time someone adds something, we will automatically uh, create that. So the engine, the PostgreSQL engine will automatically fill that field for us with the current timestamp. So now we have a table and it's always a good idea in uh, the setup scripts for um, SQL to add this drop table if exists so that if you run it again, it will recreate everything from scratch. So in the future episodes, I will show you a more structured way of managing your schema and managing your the structure of your database and your data. But for now, it's good enough. You have to just remember that each time you will run this script, it will recreate everything from scratch. So if you add some data and you run the script, those data will be erased and replaced by everything in this only in this script. So now we can add something to this data. So we will just use a plain insert, insert into an event. So now I need to specify the columns and I'm only interested in the name, this one, because this will be automatically assigned by the PostgreSQL engine and this, this one as well, because it's the default value, the result of the now function. And uh, values, so let's say polyconf 20, that's the first value. So I can add several lines, several several rows to my database and I just need to add them between parentheses. So I just need to wrap each set of values between parentheses. So strange loop in 20 and let's find, let's say, carry on like so. So now we have two ways of using this on your database. The first one, the most straightforward one approach is by using again the PSQL uh, script. You need to specify the database on which you want to 
invoke this script by using the smaller than sign. You just specify the setup file as the input for this command to execute on this setup. The create table was executed and we inserted three elements. So if I run the PSQL again, and if I do select from event, I'm, I have those three values. And then as you can see, the timestamp created at was automatically filled in. So now I would like to use this in my controller to return this data as JSON. We are trying to build a REST or REST-like API. In our controller, we need to now import the database from Unsfot, uh, DB. So now we can just say collection and we need, we need to say DB from event. So this is the name of our table. This is an asynchronous operation. So we need to await the result of that. So it means that we need to make this handler async as well. So now we can just use the collection and pass it directly instead of a string here, like so, which means that this collection will be uh, serialized into JSON and returned to the user. In order to test that, let's start the server. And now in the another window, I can just use HTTP 5544. So because I added this as a controller and event, so this is the event path. And because I'm interested in getting a collection, so invoking the browse handler, I don't have to specify anything else. And the data is returned as requested. So that's a very basic way of connecting it. I haven't mentioned many other things that are important here, but I will cover that in the next episode. I just wanted to make it workable so that you can now play with it. It's somehow in a very early but finished state. So that's all for today. In the next episode, we will make it slightly better. Thanks for watching. See you next time.